Right, hello and welcome to Metal Shaper Tom. This is episode nine of the Austin 7 special build there. Um, what I would like to call Project Prescott because that is the goal of this build is to take it up Prescott Hill Climb once it's done. So this is uh, a huge milestone in this journey um, and I can't wait to crack on with the bodywork. It all starts today and I can't wait to share that journey with you guys. Okay, so since the last video, what I've been doing is adding this little valance here and as you can see, just that lovely swooping shape up there, it's going to bring it up into the front balance. And then at the back, it's going to lead off into the boat tail. And that just adds a nice bit of depth through there. Rather than being a really narrow panel, it just makes the car flow a lot nicer, in my opinion. So at the bottom, it's got a seven inch gap from the floor to the bottom of the balance there. And I think that's plenty of clearance. What I've also been doing is just adding these little rails in this is where the body's going to be riveted along the front here i've done it on all sections and then basically when the side of the panel comes up it's going to have a slight little joggle and then riveted through here and then that is where the bonnet is going to sit on the recess and then be smooth with the side of the panel so now that is all complete what i'm going to do is start explaining where i'm going to be making my joins and the sizes of the panels that i'm going to be doing so how I'm going to approach this is pretty simple. Um, I'm going to start with the top scuttle panel uh, as that's a nice central piece to basically start from and everything else then builds uh, off from that. So then I'll then go into these side panels here, which brings up to this line. My joins are going to be behind the framework. So it's not going to be visible apart from this join here um, from the inside. So that'd be nice and uh, tidy. Uh, this skull panel is going to come all the way around here. Uh, I'm going to allow a bit of excess, about 40 mil on the front and 40 mil on the back. That allows me to put my step down here, my swage uh, for the bonnet to sit into. And then uh, the 40 at the back allows me to do my wired edge and just sit away from the frame at the back there. So that's the top piece. How I'm going to do that is very simple. A paper template over the top. Trim to size um, with just little datums on with 40 mil so I know which side to add it on to and you know where I'm going to start my radiuses when I start shaping the panel uh, and join lines and stuff like that. So I try and put as much information on the bit of paper, cut it out, I then transfer that onto the aluminium, I'll cut the aluminium out. This way it just means that you don't have loads of excess, you're not shaping unnecessary material. Uh, and you just keep it all down to a minimum, uh, you know, there's less waste and so forth. And it just makes the whole process a bit easier. So. Okay, so that's the panel all cut out. If you can just see this up here, slightly different, but that's because along this side here, it's joined slightly different because it's higher on the one side. Um, what I'm going to do is put the initial shape in using a roller. Um, this is an old traditional way that I used to do it at Morgan and uh, they're still done now. And then once I've got the first bit of shape into it, I shall then transfer it to the English wheel. Okay, like I said, this is a really old school way of doing it. Not everyone would agree uh, about this process, but it's just where I'm going to tackle this job. Just going to oil up this roller there. I've got a video that when I was making my Morgan body, um, it's exactly the same process and that's how I'm going to approach this. So if you want to see another video on this process, um, I do have one up there. So literally just going to lay it on. You've got to be really careful. Just get the panel coated so it glides. Apply a bit of even pressure and keep the panel moving at all times. If you stop, you're going to get a ridge in it. And that's the last thing you want. So you just keep moving it. Gradually pushing down either side. And in my head, 
I kind of already know what shape I'm trying to achieve. So I've got an idea of how far I can go with this. It's always good to check. If you're not too sure. It's just good practice before you start. Just clean any of the muck off the off the wheels. Any imperfections that you have on here will get transferred onto the panel. Ideally, we don't want that. So just give the panel a wipe. Especially that I've been using oil. Just clean all that off and then it's it's ready so just keep on top of that i have got some slight pitting in the top of my wheel and i am a bit concerned that when i do start wheeling i may get some little imperfections through there but um that would be an issue if i was to go for a polished body um you'd want this to be absolutely spot on um but because i'm choosing to paint it i'm not too worried uh, about that so yeah but just keep it clean. It's just a good habit to get into. Okay, so the reason why I'm now weeding a bit of shape into this after forming this initial curve on the roller is because through here and just creeping up through here, I want there to be a nice bit of shape uh, leading from the body and through into the bonnet. Uh, typically, uh, on a lot of cars, this will be a flat area, but for this one, like I said in previous episodes, I just want there to be a nice bit of subtle shape. Um, to the eye, it'll look quite flat, um, but it will make a huge difference once all the panels come together. Well, to me it will. Uh, whether the average Joe Bloggs will see it is, a, is another thing. Hopefully. Okay, just so you can see it, I thought it would be best to lay it out like this. So I've got the straight edge against the sweep over the distance of my scuttle panel. Um, as you can see, there's uh, probably about a 3 mil uh, gap there. So this is why I'm wheeling the panel, just to add this little bit of shape um, into the scuttle panel. And that's just going to help the body flow. A lot nicer rather than just being a straight edge like this if i was to just hand form it over the rollers okay so i've now got the skin sitting on the frame got a few clamps holding it in place and now what i'm going to do is just run a scriber all around the outside of the framework so i just use a scrap bit of steel with a, a 90 bent up at the end to a point that just allows me to Follow the back edge because I can't get a, a scribe up in there because I've got this lip here. I've taken this panel as far as I can take it now. All I've got to do is put this swage on. Um, and I've been doing that at work, actually, just setting up the tool. I've come up with a, a nice setting on the, the swager tool that I've got there. I'm really happy with this. So I do a close up just so you can visually see it. Um, and that is going to follow this whole line all the way around the, uh, the bonnet aperture. The bonnet will sit in there nicely. So I'll take that section there to work and finish that off. What I've also been doing. It's just sort of stamping out some louver tools there, uh, louver pressing, sorry. So I'm going to wheel this panel up now. Um, and I'd like to incorporate the louvers into that panel. So I've got this whole area here in between the lines, and that's just going to be a flat space. But I would like to possibly take this bonnet line here 
We incorporate that into the louvers, just angling them slightly, and maybe add that through the, the side panel there. I may even go in this slightly larger area here, if I can, and possibly fit a few larger ones in. There's no rush to do any of that, but now it's all coming together, and I've got these samples here. You can kind of visually see it coming together, and I'm just trying to piece a few things together. Um, this area here is going to be the blister. Now, this will be cut out, but only up to this point. I'd like to do uh, a tear-shaped blister, um, but I don't need to cut this area out. This would just be false and for visual effect, really. So this is the only area that will be cut out and will be effective, really. So uh, that's something else to bear in mind. And that is pretty much it. Uh, I will, on this panel, put the swage on it, but I won't put the wide edge on this one. What I'm going to do is get this panel uh, done uh, and to the same standard. Uh, once it's all in place, I can then mark my line all the way through. What I don't want to do is put the wide edge on this one uh, and then offer it up and it slightly be on the kink uh, because it will throw this join line out and I don't want that. I want that to run smooth. So I'll do that uh, once this panel is done. So there's no rush. You kind of got to do it in sections and piece everything together. Okay, so that is the panel there, all cut out. As you can see, it's quite a large panel to wheel by yourself. So if you can get somebody in to help you, it will make life so much easier. I'm gonna use this thing called a sweep. Uh, you may have seen it slightly earlier in the video. And I've picked a number eight sweep there, and that is a perfect match for the side panel shape there that I want to achieve. So not a lot of shape in that panel, but it's really crucial. And again, this is a very similar shape through the side of the panel there. So we're not gonna have to do loads of passes on the wheel, and we're not gonna have to add loads of pressure to it because that will shape or add shape very quickly. So we've gotta be very careful um, with this that we don't put too much in. But this is my uh, basically guide that I'm just going to be checking with. It's easy to, you know, just add a bit of pressure and create that shape going that way. But what we want it to do is go in both directions. So that's why we're going to be wheeling it. And uh, it'll make a huge difference once that panel is done. Right, okay. I just want to take a minute to basically thank Mike, Graham, Douglas, Bob, Malcolm and Oliver. We've all gone over to the paint pot and left a very generous donation. So it's given me an idea. Basically, if I can fill this board and basically everything raised is gonna to go towards the paint job on the Austin 7. But if I can fill this board, I will find a way of entering all them names and drawing them fairly and just giving away a few prizes. I've got some stickers, I've got some t-shirts made, the Austin 7 Prescott logo on the back, Metal Shaper Tom on the front. Um, I've got some slappers that I've made. I send these all over the world. Um, and these will feature heavily once I start making the body and start basically planishing uh, the welds out. Um, so got one of them and also a par weld, welding mask. I think it's only fair that people have been really generous and I'm blown away by it, that I've got to give something back more than just doing the videos. I love doing the videos anyway, but this is just my way of just an extra thank you for people's generous donations so if you want to get your name on the paint pot list of fame uh please follow the link in the description and uh once that's full hopefully you can win a prize so yeah thanks very much so what i'm doing here is literally just checking the pressure of the wheel Feel sink in that. There you go. Just a little bit. Material, I don't know if that's going to show on my thumb. And that was just leaving a little mark in the panel. And I've already cleaned this. Um, so I'll give that another clean. So you definitely don't want that for your panel.
But why I was doing that to start with was literally just to check the pressure and make sure that it's all running true. So let's have another go. Okay. Hopefully you can see them tracking marks in the panel. But yeah, happy with that. So I should give that a go. Right, okay, so on to the next bit. So, when you do that process, sometimes it can basically suck some of the shape out of there. We're asking it to do a lot, it's stretched, and all that excess material has got to go somewhere. It goes to the edge of the panel and it flares out. Now that's going in the complete opposite direction to where I want it to be going. Um, so, I've got to shrink this material and lose it um, where it's, suck some of the shape out and we have a huge hollow through here i'm going to dress that up on a block and lift that area up i'm going to wheel back through here so i've got an, again a, a very subtle but nice bit of shape and making that full again uh, but the most important thing is we've got to lose all of this um, i've already done it here i'll quickly show you um, ignore all the marks and that in the panel this is part of the process um, if you were going for a polished body, you'd probably take a fraction uh, more care. Um, but all these marks will come out with a file, the slight sand, uh, and you can polish it after. Um, I'm not going to go to that extent, but I will literally rub a file over it and a DA, and that'll be good enough for the process and for what I'm going to do at the moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just hammer this down back onto the frame. So I'm going to use this. It's called a chaser. When I was 16, uh, I made everyone in the workshop, the tin shop we called it at Morgan, where I was an apprentice. I made everyone one of them. And it's basically for when you put that swage in on the scuttle, you're going to hammer it down towards the frame. And then this lip that's flicking up, you turn the chaser onto its side and you hammer that back in there and you keep repeating the process until it basically takes uh, the form of the frame underneath and that's how i get that shape back into the panel any excess i've got through there i'm going to use a shrinker just to tighten that up and that would all go back to, to normal then obviously i can any lows that i've still got through here i'll lift back out and just keep repeating that process until you're happy with the end result so start with a bit more hammering. So I come in on Saturday morning, it's been chucking down all night, I got a leaky roof. Look at that. Lovely, just what you want. Right, okay, so I'll just quickly explain uh, what I'm gonna do next. Obviously, made this panel really simple. I'm gonna go into detail on wheeling in later videos, but I've just wheeled up this panel 
it's got a nice slight bit of shape into it. Obviously, check it with my profile, uh, my sweeps that I've got. Um, I've put the swage on, I've marked that out. That's exactly the same process as how I've done this. So what I need to do now, I've got part of that process done here. I've got part of this process here. What I need to do now is make this panel and then put the um, turn, turn the edge on the top and then just skimp in it, which are these little aircraft uh, tools. And basically you drill your hole, use a pair of pliers, um, special pliers, and it just crimps the, the panels together. Once I've got that in its final location there, that then allows me to mark the line all the way through the panel. I can mark that, cut it, and then get that edge folded over for the wide edge. And then that process is done. Okay, I tried to do a piece earlier, but the audio uh, didn't record for some reason. Um, what I'm going to do now is just turn the edge up ready to, in, well, in preparation for wire edging it. And all I'm going to do is just simply use a bar with a 13 mil slot in. So that's the size of the lift that I want to turn up when I'm putting a four mil wire in for my wired edge. So literally just put it in and then just gradually turn it up in little increments work my way around the panel. Once I've got it uh, turned up enough, I'll then use a hammer and dolly and dress the block up to 90. And that'll be as far as I go for this stage. And when I'm ready to wire it, I'll knock it over further in preparation for that. But for the moment, it's just a process I'm gonna use. Okay, so I think that brings us to the end of this episode. I think that's a good place to stop. I don't want it to drag on any more than it has to. Uh, lots to do in the next episode. I'm going to be trimming these panels down, uh, getting the wire edge ready for that, trimming these panels down, finishing the top section there. Uh, we'll be marking up for the louvers to go through uh, both panels there. You know, do I have them slanted? What louver tool can I fit in between the gaps? Um, all things to be decided. You know, we've got to get louvers throughout here. Got to design the, the blister that's going to go on there. Um, this is too small already. Uh, so this is just a mock-up. Um, so lots to do in the next episode. Um, maybe some other things. I have got a really interesting uh, piece coming on the steering wheel. I won't reveal too much at the moment, but uh, that's looking very promising and exciting. Uh, when I get onto that, that's, uh, no, I won't even say what's happening with that because uh, that would be an episode in itself. Um, and then, yeah, uh, so lots to do, lots to crack on with, uh, lots to try and figure out as I go along. So um, check out uh, my Instagram, Metal Shaper Tom. Uh, I post little snippets as I go along. Um, and, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.